Okay, what you're looking at right now are the rough measurements of the spreader. And this is so you may have some confidence if you're installing it on a non-Agrax spreader. What you can see is that it, the overall diameter, that spin zone, is almost 24 inches, 2 feet, 23 and 3 quarters. The distance, the hole centers between the, uh, where the mounts go to the back side, where it would mount to the, um, the frame of the spreader, are 17 and a half inches. Notice they're slotted vertically, so that gives you the ability to adjust it up and down. The holes on the spreader frame are slotted horizontally, so you can move it from left to right, so you get a lot of mobility right there. And the height of the unit is almost four inches. Now, the, the nice guy who did this for me, he um, used a tape measure, so this is the best they could do, and that's totally awesome. What you can't see in this photograph and why you can't assemble one from this photograph is because how this unit, there's a mounting bracket back here, you don't get to see how that's installed. And you see this little lip in here? You don't get to see how those are installed either. No, no, you can't see that. So you also have a stud here. You don't get to see how that works. So there's, there's a lot of uh, detail missing in this photograph that you need. You don't get this sticker. They don't give you that. In fact, the unit I got had no stickers on it. The best thing about my unit, besides that it works, is it's orange. I like that. So I'm showing you the dimensions on this so you can go out and measure your spreader. As I said, I have a Cytrex. It works fine on the Cytrex. It was made for an Agrax and others have used it. It, it appears that, again, the dimensions on these and how they go are very, very generic. So more power to you. I hope that helps you out. That's my plan. Well, hey, congratulations. You finally found a side spreader, bander, dresser, conveyor, call it what you will, so that your broadcast spreader can be used to direct your fertilizer or whatever directly underneath your trees, your hops, whatever, so you get more utility out of this spreader. The products don't necessarily come with instructions. More on that later. So I am going to walk you through how to get this thing on. First of all, you had a plate here where my hand is. You had a plate that went across that had a control fastened to it and the plate looks like this. You had a little knockout there for the PTO shaft. You're going to take the PTO shaft off, get it out of your way. You want to take that plate off, get it out of the way. And the lever that was attached to it, and it was attached to the disc underneath the uh, spreader, you want to take that off, get it out of the way. These are 13 millimeter bolts. You can save them, you may need them later. Okay, one reason to save all the hardware as you're taking it apart is they don't give you enough hardware to put it back together again. If you look at line number 2, A, yeah, you'll see the 8.8 .8 by 16, or what are they? Yeah, M8 by 16 bolts. You get four of them. Well, that, that makes sense. Two of them are going to hold up the deflector chute, and two of them are supposed to be holding the unit on. If you scroll down, you'll see you, have, you get six washers. Well, that's fine because two of them are going to go on one side and four to the other side. But what you don't see are four nuts. They don't give you the nuts. Apparently, I don't think these people are ISO 9000 certified. No, I, they shouldn't be exporting. Anyway, so the bottom line is when you took it apart, save your rusty, nasty old hardware because it's the only friend you've got. You can't count on the company to be your friend use these. So that's that step. You can, so far it seems like you can leave the, I call it the gate adjustment, that's the volume control, you can leave that in place. Now a little, little pro tip here, I would recommend now is a really good time to spray penetrating fluid 
or lube or whatnot onto those discs because once you enclose this, it's going to be really hard to service them. And we all know that fertilizer is pretty corrosive. So anyway, first of all, get someone to help you flip the thing over. You don't want to try to work on this on the ground or installed on your tractor. Just flip it over. Okay, the next thing you need to do is you need to assemble the two side pieces. Those two crescent shape parts have to be put on before you mount the assemblies to the frame of the spreader. Now, they're not the same. Obviously, you can see they're different, but you'll notice that this one has a little notch on it. Okay, that little notch is gonna line up with that little piece of metal coming through there. And you also notice there's a lip on this. Eh. There's a lip. inside like so. Now I have a tool to help me line stuff up. You've got bags of hardware. This is 10 millimeter. Okay, so you want to use the 10 millimeter and I'll give you a little pro tip. Put the bolt side on the inside so the nut shows on the outside. The reason for that is if they come loose, you're going to see those threads start to back off on the bolt and you'll know that it's coming loose. I also recommend, even though that they've got the little friction doers on there, put a drop of Loctite on them. So I'm going to start putting my pieces together now. Okay, I have those two halves connected with their inside crescent pieces. The lip is up on the inside so that any fertilizer that doesn't get ejected the first time gets held inside so that the air moving picks it up and, and kicks it out. And again, I'm going to repeat. I, rec I recommend that you put the bolts in like that. Remember, it's not about appearance, it's about the performance. And in the performance side of the house, you want to see if those bolts are loosening up or those nuts from vibration on the tractor. Another pro tip, you do not tighten bolts, you tighten nuts. If you are torquing on a bolt, you can shear it easily from the torsion. With a nut, you'll just tighten it. There are, I think that piece of paper in Italian told you what the torque speckings were in Newton meters. Good luck with that. But don't tighten a bolt, tighten a nut. The only exception of that, of course, is if you're just putting a, a bolt into a frame. So anyway, so far so good. Those are assembled. All right, this is kind of a retake, but you'll figure it out. Once you've got the two halves assembled, that is the tops and bottoms, you want to take the side with the scoop and attach it. So you're going to fasten it to that back bolt there and you're going to attach the brace that's underneath here. Okay? So that this piece is firmly in place. The reason I had to take it apart is because you've got this little guide here. That's no big deal. This is a big deal. You got to take this, a little more light. You got to take that pin out. I'm going to do it one handed. Slip the head underneath, pin it from the bottom, and leave that there. You can't install that piece. That piece can't be installed after the half shell's in place, and you need it. So that's kind of a retake, but to save you some trouble, I took it apart and I did it again. Then I'll go back now and I'll show you what happens after you put the clamshells back together. Um, now is also a good time, though, if you're putting Loctite on the screws, um, nut and bolt, I'm rather, you have got to mention it. when you're putting these 10 millimeters in, finger tight. Okay, all of them finger tight, including the ones that you're going to put in in here. Just finger tighten them, and then after everybody's in, then you can torque them down. Okay, now it's time to put on the back support. Now this is cool. This is not an Agrex spreader, but the photographs I've seen of all the spreaders, everyone seems to have this hole here, and I was super delighted that it fit. 
This is a 19 millimeter nut. This guy right here. That's 19 millimeters. I'll put this wrench on the back side. This guy down here, that's 17 millimeter. Now, remember what I said? Keep the threads where you can see them. But these are nylocks. They're self-locking, so it's kind of cool. But remember with this one, go easy on the torque because you've got a weld underneath there. That's all you've got to tighten on. And I would say tighten them until they just have a little bit of motion left in them because you might need a friend to help you line this up because you can see back there, I'm a little, you know, I have some tip to it. You're going to want to wiggle this thing with a friend so ultimately when you're spinning that, it's not hitting anything. So I'm going to get my hands back to work here, but as you can see, it's coming along. Okay, so now I've got this piece is in place. I've put Loctite on all those hardware with gravity on my side. I've got that pinned in there, and this needs to pin here, just like it did originally. So this will slide until you can get it into place. Now, one thing is you really can't get to that bolt. That's not a bolt, that's a nut, very easily. And if it starts to rattle loose, well, you're kind of pooched. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it apart right now, just for you guys and for me, and I'm going to put some Loctite on that nut and leave it a little loose because a little bit of play in this doesn't matter, but losing that part in the long run would matter. And then, yes, this clip goes in here to hold it in place, and then I'll show you the operation of it when I'm done getting the Loctite on it. Okay, what I did was I put a washer to help it slide back and forth for future adjustments. And I took one of the spare washers that came without nuts. And I put that with the cotter pin so it didn't rattle so much. All right, just wanted to show you that. And now you have control over the um, left to right center deflection. Um, notice that it did not come with the sticker that was in the picture you saw in the catalog. Nah, they forgot that part. Well, okay. Mm. There it is, all put together. It kicks out the port. Yeah, when you're driving, it kicks out the port, which is the driver's left side. Um, they make a dual discharge version for an extra 100 bucks. Lord knows if it's any easier to install, <laughs> I doubt it. Um, it works. I mean, it looks like it's going to work. I haven't tried it yet. I want to try it. One thing, a person on the web made a review of this product. I got in touch with her. She's a hop farmer in New York. And she said, if you have one like this, you know you've got that wheel agitator in here that might be for seed or something, keep it from compacting. She said, take it out for fertilizer. This unit does not work well with powders. So as long as you've got the bottom agitator in, there's those two little blades down there, you're good. But that big thing will crush and powder the fertilizer, and then this thing will not work as well. So I thought that was some really nice advice from her. I really appreciate her getting back to me on this. Um, I'm gonna... Here are your controls. They look familiar. Uh, obviously, the open and close does just that. It's going to be a process of trial and error to see which of the pattern positions is the most appropriate for what I'll be putting down, which is typically going to be pelletized lime or a NPK variety of fertilizer. I'm really excited to have this. Now, the one thing I did was I've had corrosion issues down on the bottom. I've had this thing for almost 10 years, and they froze up. So I first I used this stuff, coil, aero coil, to free them up, and it works great. I wouldn't recommend any other penetrating fluid. And then a friend of mine recommended this, and I'm using fluid film, a lanolin product squeezed from sheep, and I'm leaving that as a, a water-resistant barrier and to keep those from locking up again. I haven't figured out how I'm going to store this. It had been stored outside with the tarp on it. The tarp leaked, rusted, you get the story. But I do recommend take out the, the, the major impeller, take that big thing out of there, 
and before you put it into service, put some sort of water displacing penetrating fluid down there and maybe a long-term lubricant like um, fluid film or the like to keep it from rusting. So, cause you can see like here up at the edge, it's had better days. So that's it, that's the Agrex. They call it a conveyor. Uh, in the States, they call it a bander. Uh, I call it hopefully a good thing. I'll let you know if uh, I heard anything back from the vendors about the lack of documentation and the missing parts. Bye. Okay, I told you that I'd let you know if I heard back from the vendors. I want to let you know that everything attachments did get back to me. They don't, they don't have assembly instructions. All they had were the stock photographs. The OEM manufactured back in Italy, Agrex, never got back to me at all. So I'm here to fill in the blanks. Um, everything Attachments got some brownie points for trying to answer me. I really appreciate that. I regret that I have way more information than they do, so they may link to this video. Um, the I installed this on a Cytrex spreader. I've talked to other people who've installed it on other models of spreader. Apparently, this is a very generic form factor spreader. So... I'm going to try and add just a screenshot of critical dimensions on this. The importer in the United States took measurements for me, which gave me the confidence to buy this from Everything Attachments to install it. And then when it, installation didn't go well, I shot this video for you. So here you go. Everything Attachments, it's okay. You're, you need this video and watch the entire thing. There is really no trivial information in it. It's just not polished because no one's paying me for this. I am going to monetize it. If you really, I think I saved you a little bit of time, click on an ad. I get a quarter. It's worth two bits. So that's it. I wish you well and uh, hope you have a happy harvest. Take care. Bye-bye.